Um, I just want to see what I can do this morning about uh, some rust forming on a uh, Holden Rodeo. There's no such thing as a Holden um, with this type of car. It's actually an Isuzu. There's nothing Holden about it when you lift up the front bonnet. Um, so I'm going to call it a, a uh, Isuzu uh, pickup. And just here, rust keeps forming and it's actually forming uh, over a shorter period of time. I've rubbed it back or uh, you know, sandpapered it back and um, I've applied paint and silicon to try and um, stop the, the rust but uh, it keeps on forming so what I'm going to try and do is get in through this area here, take off this mud flap and the, uh, the mud guard and uh, just see what I can expose to treat this, uh, this rust. There are the treat rust uh, videos about this car and uh, everything everything else is good. All the rust behind the, uh, the cab has been under control by the work previously done. The uh, just below the front windscreen how there was all that rust that's all still good. Um, this is approximately uh, six months after the, the second treatment of the rust on this car and there's just this very slight bit of rust coming out from underneath the, uh, the rear windscreen. But yeah, this is the, uh, the main problem here and if I don't do something about it now, in uh, two or three years this is going to be, uh, be start to be rusted out. So the first thing I notice is uh, this build up of uh, rubbish just there just leaves and dirt and all that sort of thing and uh, you know that could be getting down and, and seeping into this area here okay so uh, that's a bit of a false alarm this is uh, this is plastic it's plastic cover so um, there we go it's just the uh, certain stuff there, so it's nothing. But behind the uh, the cover, um, you can see that's all damp and uh, where the rust could be getting through this hole, for instance. But I've got to find a way of accessing that uh, behind there. Okay, so I've removed these fasteners and I was able to uh, bend the uh, the mud guard back up and under. And that exposes this plate here, covering the inside of the, uh, the panel. So um, we come down here and we can see a lot of, a bit of rust and a lot of uh, dirt build up there. And uh, that is the cause of, uh, of the rust reoccurring on the, uh, the lower part of the panel. So here you might be able to see there's a screw there and a, uh, a screw down there and that should release this plate. I've got to say at this stage that this is uh, very intelligent thinking from uh, Isuzu knowing that in the future this would have to be treated, this corner here. Oh God! Well, I think that just about explains the whole uh, dynamics of this situation.
Okay, so I can't actually see up in and around uh, inside this uh, this panel. So I'm hoping to get a glimpse of what's inside there now. That's around to the inside of the panel there. Okay, so with the rust, there's two main areas. There's one there and one here. The one at the corner just seems to be a little bit of rust build-up just there. But the one right in the uh, that sort of uh, that corner where it's all uh, there's still some wet uh, mud. That's the main source of the problem. Okay, so as you can see, um, the actual inside of the of the uh, lower panel is uh, in amazingly good condition for uh, for rust to be showing on the outside. So what I'll do is just get the Dremel and uh, get the wheel, wire wheel, and just tidy up this rust here and on the edge here, and uh, I'll treat it with something, some rust paint or uh, paint on bitumen. As you may be able to see, there's an actual intentional gap there built in along that edge, but there's an actual bent over edge here. I don't know, if it's, it's probably not going to show up on camera, but uh, that where there's no light there, there's a bent over edge, and that's where, the, uh, where this rust is coming from. Well, instead of a one and a half, two hour job, looks like it's the, uh, the job of the day. Um, coming up underneath the uh, the other side here it's uh, not looking too good Um, I get the feeling that using the metal plate there to um, and installing it behind the plastic has probably done a little bit more harm than good. It's uh, sort of backfired on them. Probably better off without that plate there and allowing all this rubbish here to uh, to escape. Of course, all the uh, all the threads have locked and rusted and locked all the threads on the nuts and bolts holding this uh, this assembly together. So as you can see this is far worse than the other one in terms of the uh, the build up of uh, mud although on the outside there's actually almost no rust. There's a little bit gathering along there where the uh, the L bend is bending back inside the uh, the panel but uh, it's not too bad at all. Okay, so 
with it all cleaned up you can probably see down there there's probably more rust on the inside of this side than the other side so um, she's right to be treated I'll get myself some uh, rust proof paint for the treatment of this Okay, so it's uh, it's all good and painted. So uh, so long as the car doesn't go out with a bad gearbox or some other uh, unfixable thing, you know that uh, that panel there should be able to get about you know an extra ten, seven, ten, fifteen years out of it. So there's the other side. It's all looking good down there. It's amazing there wasn't more rust considering that uh, there was sort of mud built up to about this level here. I'd say that these uh, metal panels would have been installed with the idea of um, if there was a big uh, build up of mud that this would rust through and the mud would come out. Well, it rusted through but the mud didn't come out. There's the other one from this side where we started, and uh, you know that uh, didn't do as badly. But uh, I won't be reinstalling these. I'll just be installing the uh, the plastic covers. Okay, so the mud guard and the rock deflectors been put back on, and uh, should be good to go. Okay, so keep an eye on my videos and I'll keep you updated as to how the rust goes with this car.